William X. Nietzsche, you're watching Citizen2Music.com. So we're going to go into a few facts and specifics about why this has occurred uh, to clear it up for the viewers. This case is about an unlawful foreclosure that took place right here in Multnomah County, Portland, Oregon. This fraudulent bump subprime loan originated in 2004 that preyed upon an elderly couple uh, who happened to be my mother and father, William and Julie Kinney. HSBC Bank, one of the world's largest British banks, was here in America operating, preying upon the American people with predatory home loans. Uh, these loans were then eventually passed around like hot potatoes. As you know, HSBC Bank was kicked out of the USA for mortgage-backed securities fraud. So in 2016, we discovered unlawful transfer of the mortgage note. I had a, a securitization audit report conducted by CFLA who then revealed numerous fraudulent assignments wherein it ended up with U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank uh, got a hold of this fraudulent bump subprime loan. They held a non-judicial foreclosure auction right here in Multnomah County Court on the front steps. Me and my mother showed up at this particular auction to stop it in which we did successfully we put everybody on notice that we had a interest in the property our trust uh, claimed the property uh, William and Julie Kenny no longer own the property it was held by trust and so we went into litigation and arbitration we then went to the federal district courthouse and filed a verified federal complaint uh, I filed over 60 motions at least. And our purported judge, Michael Simon, who is now a criminal in this case, he made a, a critical decision ruling that mortgage electronic registration system, also known as MERS, was a mere Stravener's heir. He equated that MERS and how they got the interest from HSBC uh, was a mere Stravener's heir. And the judge in this matter dismissed our verified complaint with prejudgment we, we demanded a jury trial in our federal complaint. That is a violation of our constitutional rights. You can't dismiss a, a verified uh, federal complaint with prejudice when there is substantial facts on the record. So this is a conglomerate ring. They were all uh, conspiring together on depriving us of our right to a jury trial and trying to send us back to the inferior courthouse where we then held them off with a counterclaim. We sued uh, about four judges in Multnomah County for trespass and trespass on the case because we were starting to reveal this fraud. This fraud was starting to be revealed. We have a lot of collusion going on between the uh, the agents that are in the federal courthouse and the agents that are in the Multnomah County State Courthouse. Uh, we filed another verified lawsuit, a Quee Tom action, alleging violations pertaining to false SEC registration statements. Goldman Sachs, U.S. Bank, HSBC were all criminal uh, white collar crimes passing these notes around. We went in to the Monoma County Courthouse, made them aware that we were going to be executing a citizen's arrest on these numerous rogue public servants, and this as well was an unlawful proceeding uh, scheduled by uh, defendant urban housing development. So they reignited that case. They have used this kangaroo court to try to eject my elderly mother and father from their land on 20, 30 occasions. I've had to appear in that inferior kangaroo courthouse about this matter that belongs in federal court. And so we showed up with a criminal complaint. They didn't know that what was coming. We had just filed a day prior on my birthday. It's under Title 18. No one was in the court. It was vacant. So that's default. You know how they do us. They hold us in default. So we did the same thing, but we did something in international law called forum prorogatum. And that's where you seize the court for international violations. I went in first and Emperor Amari Jivari seized the bench by the Moroccan uh, Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1786, as well as the United Nations Declarations uh, of Indigenous Rights. That was, we were there to arrest them. Uh, the, that was the subject that day. So G4S came in like the Goon Squad. These are private mercenaries. You can look them up. They came in and they, they attacked. They weren't reasonable in, in how they detained Emperor Omar Jibari. They just started immediately beating him. On the judge's bench, there was excessive force, over force use. They dragged me from the court 
and took me to the justice center and they had certain code words of how to kill me without having it showing on my autopsy. All right, now this is real. All right, they had me as a John Doe right there. I had to play dead for 20 seconds. All right, just to get some breath back and yell my name, Emperor Mario Jabri, Emperor Mario Jabri, but they already cut up my clothes. They thought I was dead. They marked me as a John Doe. My brother right here is trying to break down to y'all the de facto governments. They have uh, a corporate umbrella, which is public, and then they have a private side that actually terminate and kill shit and do sneaky ass shit. We are addressing these matters on the international platform now. They have, they have ran them up. This case is a political case. I am an Aboriginal indigenous to the land from the tribe of Upper Skagit, ancient Salish Multnomah Territory. We are indigenous to this land and this case revealed not only a fight for the land back, but it also reveals a problem with homelessness, reveals problems with a broken economy, it reveals a a broken judicial branch. We're, we're drafting an international complaint to the ICJ for the numerous uh, breaches of the international treaties that are in place to protect indigenous peoples.